Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Now, on to today's story. What made you do a 180 and say yes to polyamory? I need your help. Have you ever started off saying no to polyamory, and now are totally into it? My wife told me today that she wants to begin an ongoing, sexual relationship with our neighbor, who is our friend. We've been together for six years, and she and I completely and fully trust each other. But I've never wanted to be poly. And at this point, I don't want to be poly. But I want to at least be okay with her sleeping with other people, because I know it would make her happy. But when I picture her sleeping with our neighbor, or anybody other than me, I feel so, so sad. Is there some way I'm not seeing all this that someone can think of? Can a couple work when one is poly and one isn't? I quite literally wish I could flip the switch in my head and heart to want this. She is the most important thing to me, and she has been understanding of my discomfort with this, but I know she's disappointed. Thank you for your advice in advance. Thanks to this sub I've been going through it. My amazing wife was curious about Polly, had someone in mind, our annoying neighbor who professed feelings, I desperately wanted to say yes because I wanted her to have what she wants, but inside my world felt like it was imploding, and felt rage, hurt, and fear in a way that I've never knew I was capable of feeling in 40 plus years of living. She told me in the morning, and by the night time, we'd agreed not to go ahead with it, such relief. But we've been talking about it so much since then. And while she feels totally capable of Polly, I absolutely do not. She agrees that what's most important is our marriage and investment into each other. She feels terrible for the pain that this has caused, and I'm working through my hurt and anger, and trying to stop the excruciating images that have been in my head during all this. I know we'll be okay, and I feel loved and safe. I wanted to want Polly so much for her that I was gaslighting myself for wanting to stay mono as soon as she brought it up. That's a hard thing to admit. I'm a progressive, liberal, LGBTQ plus person who loves talking about hard stuff. Who loves evolving and learning and even loves realizing I'm wrong. It helps that my wife didn't gaslight me, in fact, whenever she'd clarify her point of view, she'd tell me that her intention wasn't to undermine my feelings, just trying to explain. I have a lot of respect for her, and I'm glad she said everything she did while not saying I was wrong for feeling how I feel. Great balance in a sticky situation. Reading this sub has helped me not make a habit of gaslighting myself. It's been so reassuring to learn and read what's been said here. I know this dust will settle and we'll be stronger for this very scary experience. I know her better now, and she knows me better now. And I'm so relieved I didn't say yes to this. She said she wouldn't have been able to go through with it knowing how I felt anyway. Thanks to you all. You saved me so much time and suffering. How to be okay with her sleeping with someone I really dislike. We've been together for 6 years, F40 me, F30 her, married for almost one. 3 weeks ago, my wife brought up wanting to open our marriage, sex only, with our annoying neighbor. The neighbor has got a lot of good things going for her, but she's also immature, self-centered, dramatic, and clingy. My wife and I used to roll our eyes at her privately, but somehow in the last little while, something about the neighbor started appealing to my wife sexually. I was and am very surprised. I'm proud of how I've evolved from hell no. Emotional meltdown. At first, to okay, I trust you, and I see that this could be good for you and us, to talking about circumstances I think I will and will not be comfortable with, her too. But right now, the annoying neighbor is the only one on her radar. And I'm having a hard, hard time saying yes. And I wanna be able to say yes. I feel like the neighbor doesn't deserve her, like my wife is a queen, and this person is a troll under a bridge. I don't want my neighbor to have the satisfaction. But I wanna be the type of person who somehow can disconnect from that sort of thinking. And when we hang out all three of us, I hate seeing them exchange knowing looks. 
feels like a punch in the gut, but I wanna be the type of person who delights in seeing those looks. I recognize this is 100 million percent me centric, and a lot of people will say it shouldn't matter what you think of the person your wife is ducking and or if you really were secure, it shouldn't matter if you see them exchange looks, etc. Yeah, yeah, I know. But how do I get there? How did you remove your projections and disdain for the person your spouse is sleeping with, and say go get them, dear? And how did you get to the point where you could share a room or a cookout with that person and not want a bath? Thankfully, the neighbor just moved to another part of town, but I feel like if I can somehow make myself feel a lot better about my wife sleeping with her, I'd reach this next level of acceptance so when she inevitably finds someone else she's interested in, I can easily say yes, because I said yes to the hardest one, also, neighbor is the one to launch this whole change in our marriage, so of course there are residual resentments on my side. I'd be the cool, confident, encouraging person that I wanna be, that I think I can be. And my wife can feel 100% free to be herself, too. How do you get over these hurdles? Edit to add, my wife knows every word of this, she's been awesome receiving every tiny blast of emotion and answering every question I ask with honesty and compassion. What is sacred? A month ago, my wife told me she wanted to open our marriage sexually. After lots of talking and reading and thinking and listening, to her and me, I am getting closer to being okay with the idea. She has someone she wants to have sex with, and I currently have no interest in pursuing anybody else. One thing I'm having a particularly hard time changing my understanding of is the concept of sacredness. To me, in the context of our marriage, our naked bodies are sacred, our sex is sacred, our kisses are sacred. Special. Meaningful. Ours. Of course our marriage is the sum of all of its parts, but those parts include sex and affection. Here's the rub, if they are shared with someone else, how can that sacred feeling remain intact? If you struggled with this, how did you evolve out of it? Is there a way I'm not thinking about this? Thanks. Like I'm in another country. My wife and I have been mono for six years, and it's been a month since my wife said she'd like to have a FWB. It was a surprise to me, and I started off absolutely devastated and confused. I've been reading all of the books, listening to podcasts, talking and reading here on Reddit and on Facebook groups. Some days, I feel so confident that with time, more talking, and more learning, we will get there. We will get to the point where she can get what she needs, and I can be okay, and who knows. Someday I may find myself wanting someone else, too. Definitely leaving myself humbled ahead of time. Some days, though, I'm just sad. This is not what I wanted for myself or our marriage, and I have to mourn that but I respect her and trust her and want her to feel free. We were talking last night about risk and trust and vulnerability. And it occurred to me that on the days where I feel sad and like I don't understand why this is so worth it to her to pursue, it feels like I'm in a totally different country. Her new country. And the customs aren't just new, they're the opposite of what I grew up in and have always operated within for her, it's like, I know in your country, if I wanna duck someone other than you, it means there is something lacking, and I will eventually fall in love with someone else and want to leave you. But in this country, me wanting to duck someone other than you means that our marriage is actually stronger than ever. In my country, a middle finger is duck you, and in her country, it means you're the best. I'm sure there's a better analogy out there, but you get what I mean. When you're in someone else's country, you trust that your guide is interpreting it honestly, and making it so your visit there is safe. I trust her. In the sense of opening up our marriage, I'm in a new country, and I'm confused and vulnerable. I know it'll take some time, but thinking of it this way helps a little. Maybe it'll help someone who feels the same way as I do in these early stages. Did you ever feel this way in this new country? Did you become a citizen there instead of a tourist? Any travel advice? How do you know when you're ready? Mono here, 
with my wife who, five weeks ago, realized that she wants to pursue a friend with benefits arrangement. There's someone in mind, and the attraction is mutual. This is not something I want for myself, but I totally understand on paper. I swing between utter angst, fear, and despair, and duck it, just do it, and we'll figure it out as we go. I know in my brain that this isn't about me, that it will make her feel happy. But my heart's wiring is exploding all over the place with the usual shitty soap opera stories of fear and jealousy. I bet it's uncommon to feel 100% ready for anyone to take the leap, even if they're into the idea themselves. But when did you know it was time to say go for it? To your poly partner? I can see it coming, advice needed. Getting started. On May 6th, my wife, together six years, married a little under one, asked if we could open our marriage so she could have sex with our neighbor. She thought I'd be okay with polyamory. I respect it and know it works for some couples, but it's not what I want. But I was willing to talk about what we could agree on in terms of opening up. It was difficult and full of painful conversations. She said she brought up open marriage because she felt our marriage was so strong and secure. Turns out the things I love about monogamy don't feel the same to her. It was a sudden, sad realization that we see this part of what it means to be married so differently. Never thought to ask on our first date about monogamy. On our first date, we did talk about kids. I said I know I don't want them. She said that she could see her life going either way benefits to both. Anytime it would come up in our marriage, we would just laugh about all the money we make and can spend easily because hey, no kids. But last week, after these difficult months talking about polyamory, she admitted that she's been also wrestling with the reality that she's been wanting kids. She's realizing that while she was telling the truth on that first date, and whenever we joke about money, she was burying her true feelings, which is to have children. She wanted to stay married to me because our life is really wonderful, but she knew that to have kids, she couldn't be with me. She's 31 years old now, and is worried she may miss her chance, biologically. I can't believe it, but divorce seems imminent. We both love each other as much as ever. We're both starting therapy individually this week. She has begun looking for an apartment. My heart is broken. I will live in this big house alone all of her gardens, our wedding photos and love notes on the walls. I never thought I'd ever find someone I wanted to marry, who would want to marry me too. And I can't believe it's happened this way. Six years with someone, and over the course of a couple of months, the bottom opens up and it all falls down. Any advice about not spiraling into a depression? It's been about 20 years since the last time I was depressed, and I can feel it closing in on me. And this is all just getting started. Anything you wished you knew before your divorce? I'm so scared and so, so sad. How long until divorce got out of your daily psyche? Getting started. I'm just at the beginning here, and of course, it's all I think about. Not one moment goes by, no matter if I'm doing something I love or something novel, that I'm not in some way thinking about or feeling this divorce. It's amicable, she changed her mind about pursuing parenthood, knowing that I do not want to be a parent, but it's so sad because we still love each other so much. And I'm sad because she changed her mind and now I'm losing my wonderful marriage. I'm relieved that it wasn't because I did anything wrong, so there's no guilt to wrestle with. And we were married just under a year, together for six, so we weren't too financially entangled. Starting mediation in a couple of weeks, we agree on how to split everything, and she's moving out in a month, so we have time together to cry and laugh and start easing out of this together. But I'm wondering, when did this stop being everything you think about and feel? Was it a year? A couple of months? A couple of years? When did this stop being so present for you? Did you do anything to make it a smaller factor in your heart every damn day? Improving as she packs. Getting started. After six years, we're getting divorced, and she's moving out at the end of the month. She's been packing for the past week, and it sucks. All the empty spaces on the walls. 
boxes full of her things piling up. My heart has never been so heavy. My feelings have never been so big. As she packs, I have noticed that I work to improve our home that she's leaving. I've weeded almost the whole yard. I've put up a new shower curtain, and retouched some paint work. I'm organizing the closets and the basement, giving away old stuff, cleaning parts of the house that really have needed it. I even started making more fencing and gates for our garden. At first, I thought it was just a way for me to feel like I'm in control of something I have almost no control of. But last night, I realized that it's also my effort to counterbalance all that she's taking away. So when she leaves, at least there will be a few things that are better. Thought I'd share, in case anyone feels stuck in this terrible time. Edit, I'm also going to hire a house cleaning service. For the first time. She just moved out. Getting started. Six years together. She changed her mind about wanting to become a mom. Ended on good terms. Helped her move into her new apartment. Cried and cried and cried together. Buried my rings in the pot of our favorite plant. Now that she's gone, I feel completely shell-shocked. Could use some words of encouragement and support. Thank you. How do you stop thinking about them being with the person they left you for? Mental health slash depression slash loneliness This new lover wasn't the only reason my wife left me, but it was a big part of the story. I know with 100% certainty that they're together now. When you start picturing them together, how do you stop? Any tricks? Advice? It's making me feel like my chest is caving in. I've got a therapist, and I practice meditation. But the images are still killing me. Please help. But how do you let go? I know it's important to acknowledge painful thoughts and feelings, and to let them go. But what are ways to really let go? I mean, there's no form to fill out or get notarized, you know what I mean? So how do you let go? Rituals? Look up and say something? Scream? And how do you know if you've let it all go, and not, like 28% of it? How do you do it? Not all divorces are shit shows. Getting started. My wife and I were together for six years. She changed her mind and decided she wanted to pursue becoming a parent, something we explicitly agreed not to do. It was an agonizing understanding to come to, but I'm grateful it wasn't because we stopped loving each other. That is a pain that I am grateful to not have to experience. We used mediation. They said it was the quickest divorce in the history of their law firm. She and I agreed on everything. Had one meeting to meet the mediator and talk about how this could go. Had a second meeting where they confirmed info on our financial statements. Then a third and final meeting in person at the firm to sign the papers. We held hands throughout the signing. Cried together. Then went out for ice cream. We'll probably get word that the divorce went through in a few weeks. Today would have been our anniversary. She's coming over later, and we're gonna have a fire and burn our bouquets and crowns. Mark the date, say some things, wish each other well, and then go no contact for a little while. I imagine that down the line, we'll begin to get back in touch and explore what our friendship will look and feel like. I know it's uncommon, but this is a reminder that divorce isn't always a shit show, and it can be done quickly, with love and compassion. Had my first session two days ago and I am furious at my first session on Thursday. I'm working on processing the utterly painful and sudden end of what was a beautiful, loving, sweet marriage. My wife cheated on me with our neighbor. I found out. She lied about it. For the I movement portion, I focused on my ex-wife lying to my face when I asked her to tell me the truth. I knew the truth, I overheard one of their phone calls, it was shocking and demeaning and so, so painful to hear. I imagined the face of the woman she cheated on me with, she was our neighbor and friend, smug, getting what she wanted. I heard her flirtatious voice. I imagined the two of them together, which I know they are now. 
I've been angry this whole time, but I felt like I'd catch little glimpses of the anger. Like, it was too big for me to really embrace it. And there were times in the past couple of months, I thought, do I have the right to really be angry about this? Like, is it that bad in the scheme of the world? Which I know is bonkers. The fact that I'm even questioning whether or not I have a right to be angry is a thing in and of itself. But tonight? Two days after EMDR? I, am, absolutely, ducking, furious. I put on rage against the machine and tore apart a heavy bag. In the dark. Imagine the woman she's with now, and went duck in crazy on that bag. Then I went down to the basement, put Pearl Jam, 10, on the headphones, turned out the lights and smashed that kit. Mostly crash slash symbol slash hi-hat. Just smashed IT. And then I cried for 20 minutes straight. Just wailed like a baby drool and everything. Ducking fountains out my eyes. Screaming crying. Then I took a long shower. No music or podcasts or anything. Thanked my body parts as I soaped them. Do my toes know what we've been through? Then, I looked at my face in the mirror. All of a sudden, when I widened out my view, I saw my big self. The one who knows, really knows, I deserve better than all this. We had a chat. Now, to get to the point where I'm living from the point of view of that big self. And this one? I hope it dissolves. When to move back into the main bedroom. Getting started. After she left, one month ago, I moved out of our big bedroom and into our guest bedroom. I try to walk into our old bedroom every day so it doesn't become this looming thing, but, I do want to move back in there someday. Thing is, there are two sinks in the attached bathroom. And all I think of is of her naked in that bathroom, and obviously all the other memories. I've taken everything off the walls, the closet is empty. But it's so full of memories and feelings. How and when should I try to move back in there? Any tips? Rage and sleep story my wife, now recent ex-wife, finally admitted the extent to which she was cheating. I thought it was just an emotional affair, but turns out, she'd been physically cheating almost the whole time while she was downplaying their relationship. The good news is I know now that my instincts are reliable. I get to keep that. I'm proud that I trusted my wife, even as she betrayed me. I want to be able to trust. I get to keep my integrity. Although looking back at my post history is sad, but that's on her. Now that I know what was really happening, the history of all of this is being re-remembered in a new context, and what she did was reprehensible, over and over again. What I can't figure out is how to stop waking up at 3 a.m. every morning, remembering one more lie she told me. One more convincing gaslight. The adrenaline jolts me awake. My day starts with white hot fury. Every day. Do you know how I can stop this pattern? Or am I just gonna wake up furious every day until I don't? I've got a great therapist, I talk with my friends, I distract myself with meaningful work, I exercise regularly. But every morning, like clockwork, I roll over in bed, remember a lie or a gaslit conversation, and I'm on fire and awake for the day. I miss sleep. It's been months. Please help. We hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Please comment, like and subscribe. Cheers. Have a wonderful day or night. Wherever you are.